but it, there was no structure presented to us. And I think it would be very inspiring also to hear from entrepreneurs, you know, real entrepreneurs come and speak to us in schools and doing some entrepreneurial projects as kids. I mean, this was, I obviously studied in Turkey. So I, my experience is from the Turkish kind of primary education. So that would be my recommendation. <laughs> Thank you, Selin. Yeah, uh, even at the universities, we need more role models. Uh, still, uh, uh, at least from Turkish part of the universities, I can say we need more role models. Therefore, actually, we are trying to gather you uh, because you are role models right now for our students as well. And thank you for your suggestions. Yes, Bettina, what can we do more? Um, I think it would be really helpful when you're working, you get a lot more opportunities to try some other fields, some other areas out because you start with one job and then that's it. So for me, example, I wanted to, um, part, to work part time and start my business, but it was not the opportunity for me. It was not possible. So I had to think, okay, do I want to quit my job, It is a high risk, or do you want to stay in the job and to think later in 10 years, what would it be? Could it be a, a success or not? So I think this is a really hard decision. For me, I have no children, um, so it was easier. Yeah, But if you have, um, have a, a house, a children, um, it's not uh, such an easy uh, decision to make. So I think um, the workplace should be a lot more open um, to these kind of um, new uh, work areas. Yeah, exactly. So we need to design a working structure, workplace, yeah. and and then these issues um, from the entrepreneurial. Uh, inspiration. As actually Maria Rosa already told us, entrepreneurship is something thinking, something you need to change your lifestyle according to that structure. Yes, Maria Rosa, what you would like to say us? Yes, um, I believe that uh, entrepreneurship should be taught horizontally, as Celine said, from a very young age. Um, role models are very important and what's more important is to train uh, the guidance, career guidance teachers because we need to train them because they are the, the ones that uh, speak to the students and we need to train them that there is also always another option. You can go, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be an entrepreneur in any um, occupation that you choose. Um, and as I said before, it's the entrepreneurial mindset. So if we train these career guidance teachers, they will be able to guide the students more because um, uh, they will have the knowledge and the know-how. And even at university level, um, I believe that the students should do like stage with, with the industry, with organizations, so they can get hands-on knowledge because most of the students, they come out with their master's degree, with their degrees, but um, then again, they have no um, know-how or no knowledge um, um, of the industry or of the business. And we all know from experience that from the academia to real life, there is a no whole ocean in between. So um, I think they should have more, more hands-on experience. So when they come out of university, they already know what at stake. It could be some uh, weeks during their summer holidays. It could be integrated in, in term, uh, in the term of university. But I really believe that it will help the students, you know, even, even more, even, uh, even more when they come to choose um, uh, their, their career. Thank you, Maria Rosa. Actually, when uh, when you are talking, three uh, people, three participants, when you are talking, when, you are, when I'm looking at the reports, they are saying exactly the same. So I'm so happy. Actually, you are correcting my reports, my analysis. And, and because the biggest barrier to women entrepreneurs today is the lack of access to the networks, finances, 
and role models they are saying. So actually you are mentioning all of them and I, I'm so happy. Maria Rosa, maybe next time we can write a uh, European Union project about that. It's already the, the uh, solution is over there. So uh, thank you uh, actually, uh, you're all um, inspiration and, and motivation. And uh, do we have any questions? Oh yeah, I, Sabine. I, would, I would like to ask a question. Um, yes, Sabine. Because uh, Bedina said before, um, that she sometimes hear that people say, well, it's your hobby, that is your passion, so we are not going to pay you. And actually, I had some entrepreneurs here who were saying exactly the same thing. So I would wonder, what is your answer that you usually give those people? Um, I, For me, I have my list, so I, I have so, okay, I need to, when I'm taking a picture, a video, or what else, I, I always have, okay, I need this in this time, and I will send this to them. So I will say, um, I'm glad you're liking my work, but I have to pay my rent. So <laughs> this is uh, this is the um, the amount of money that is um, yeah that is yeah. right for the um, for the um, uh, Leistung um, I'm giving. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the services. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah. yeah because I heard this already before. And I've just one more uh, question, maybe, I don't know, but when we say that pe uh, women should participate in the economy and we're always talking about paid work full time, but I think especially women, because sometimes they work part time, they do the care work for children. They very often care for elder people like their parents. Uh, they usually are engaged in some clubs and do the work there. So I wonder if they all now work just full time for this paid work, all those other areas, have a lack of people. So I'm sometimes wondering if when we talk about economy, we are only talking about this work in one industry or something. It's it's like not looking at the whole life of, of people, is it? Because it's so much more than just this part of work. Or also like, I think Bettina also said it, uh, she wanted to work part-time to be, um, to try this, this, this entrepreneurship. I know many entrepreneurs, they don't want to like quit and to try it because it's really high risk. Many of them want to have a part-time job, start a business, and if it works, then they do it full-time. So I think we need a, a different uh, set of thinking, like Celine and also Mary Rose already mentioned, also for our quality of life. What, what do you think about that? I think um, uh, nowadays, yes, uh, I agree with you that we have a lot of different facets. So we have our full-time employment, we have our organizations, we have our home life, and sometimes it seems that it is a constant juggle. It is a constant juggle, you know, between work, between our time, and uh, now as well with, with uh, the ease of uh, social media, everybody expects an answer here and there, you know, you receive emails at 11 o'clock at night, and uh, you feel guilty not to answer it and you're never like away from uh, from your mobile phone or from your laptop. And this is, I think, where you need to uh, stop and think and um, think about work life balance as well, because after all, in the great scheme of things, I mean, life is, is short and uh, <laughs> you will either burn out, you know, or you will give everything and then when uh, you you have a burnout, you, you will not be able to perform. And um, when people keep saying, I am so busy on this, I'm that, it's, um, it is not a good sign because then you will not give your 100%. Um, so yes, I believe that sometimes it is a very small word, word, but it's very difficult. You need to start to learn how to say no and not feel guilty about it because sometimes um, we feel very guilty to say no, um, but I should be help that one and I should do this and I should do that. Um, so yes, by all means, uh, do volunteer work, do give your time to your family, do give your time to your business, but please do not forget to give time to yourself. And sometimes, yes, to the detriment of others, but you say, no, this is my me time, you know, now this is um, what I need to do. I mean, I'm saying probably I am the oldest one here, so I'm talking from experience. Burnout is certainly um, not a nice thing. And um, 
I, I really believe. And now I, I do a conscious effort. And yes, um, I'm trying to get over my guilt that I feel guilty because I'm stopping or I feel guilty because I did not answer that email um, in time. But um, yes, for, for the sake of my um, my mental <laughs> health balance, you know, um, yes, I am learning uh, to say no and not feel guilty that I am saying no. Thank you, Maria Rosa. I'll, I'll keep in mind that uh, when I say no to uh, somewhere, somebody, somebody. And I would like to ask you, we, we had a pandemic, uh, we had an economic crisis and all these issues. Are they affecting uh, uh, your entrepreneur uh, motivation uh, in these um, crisis times? Uh, uh, and for example, earthquake in Turkey. So we are facing many other crises year by year. It is exactly. Um, it is uh, even increasing. So how about uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, uh, do you have, um, do you feeling um, uh, strength to fight with this crisis or entrepreneurship can have a, a, a fighting uh, tool for this crisis? What do you think? Yeah, I think what's, um, what's difficult is that when a crisis happens, I mean, for me, I don't know how it is for others, but I feel like I need to help also, you know, take an action and do something. Um, the same with, you know, the war with Ukraine and Russia and then the uh, Turkey earthquake and COVID, you know, <laughs> like when every crisis comes up. And also because I'm doing, you know, the startup is Goodstead. So also it is for helping social and environmental challenges. So uh, as a startup and as a founder, I feel responsibility. Um, but I think what I faced is when there is resources in the startup, then obviously it's easy to to leave all the priorities that you have going on in the business and do something to help. And if there is capacity in the team, you you create that capacity. If it's not if you're not at a kind of a, a critical kind of um, stage, but for example. This year, we, we have been in a challenging, you know, stage with the startup and we have to, you know, focus. We have limited capacity within the team. So when the, when a crisis happens, you feel super bad not being able to do as much as you want. You do a little bit to help. Um, and then also you're trying to balance it with the company and um, you need to also see how it's going to affect the startup itself. Because, you know, during COVID, a lot of um, startups got affected, some of them um actually used as an opportunity and it a lot of new startups came out as well so it can be challenging to find balance i think to both um help and focus on your startup at the same time but you know um as we all said we shouldn't feel super bad if we can only do very little because our well-being is also important so if we push super hard and if we burn out as a result and if our startup fails as a result because we are trying to help a crisis as well so that's why that's also not good so yeah exactly thank you Celine uh, really uh, balance is important and 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 you 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 just describe us and Bettina what do you think um and for me I already started in the middle of the corona crisis so exactly. it was uh, it was um a challenge and difficult but i i have no comparison so a lot of people in my field say Oh, everything before the Corona crisis, the market, um, it was, everything was way better. But for me, I, I don't know. So it's great for me now. Um, and I try, because I'm also on social media, I try to use my uh, platform also to draw attention to these kind of crises. Yeah, to use it for also for the good and not only for my own marketing. And yeah, but on the other hand, of course, I'm also really affected um, from the price um, increases from the groceries. Yeah? And if the people are willing to pay more for uh, luxurious um, products like mine, which are handmade and more uh, pricey than, um, than other things, yeah. Thank you. And Mari Rosa, what do you think? Uh, 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 because every year we are facing a new crisis. So uh, uh, how, how can we get better and, and get prepared for this crisis as an entrepreneur? And these last few years, I think there was 
a lot of crisis together. As you mentioned, you know, the, the earthquake in Turkey. I have some colleagues that lost their home, that actually lost their home. Um, uh, the train crash in, uh, in Greece a few days ago, you know, the, the, the climate change problems, COVID. So it, um, uh, it is very easy to get demotivated, to say, you know, what for am I doing all this? Because all this is happening. But I think once um, you are living, you need to keep going. And what I always say, this too will pass. This when I uh, when I face a crisis or something that is big, I try to take it in bite-sized pieces, pieces, and I say this will pass. You know, in in a few months, in a few years, and it's true because I started my company in uh, during COVID because I started operating in January 2020. And in March, we closed down. Um, so for me, it was um, there was the good of it because um, I had to uh, stay at home because from traveling nearly every week, I, I had to, <laughs> to be home. So I had time like to stop, think, write proposals um, and think what I wanted to do with, with my life. Um, but yes, uh, when the weeks went by and, and the months went by, I kept saying, my God, you know, is this it? Uh, are we going to stay like this forever? But uh, I think now the worst of it has passed as well. And uh, we have to take it day by day, not to think in the very long term, you know, and uh, keep our perspective uh, together. Help, as Celine said, help where we can giving our time, um, our money, or um, even our expertise, but um, even think of yourself, because um, as the saying goes, you cannot pour from an empty teapot. So first you have to be the full teapot to be able to give to others, um, because that, that's the, I think, a lot of women, because we are sensitive to these issues. And again, we uh, do not know how to say no, keep giving and giving until there's nothing more more to give so yes um we have to uh, be very alert on what is happening um around us and help when we can but we need to help ourselves we need to nurture ourselves because we, if we don't do that we we cannot help the others Thank you, Marilos. Uh, thank you very much for inspiration. And and uh, actually, uh, I, I am coming to the concluding remarks. Uh, I, I would like to ask you: Would you like would you like to add for the last sentences or, or as a conclusion uh, for your thoughts? And would you like to just give last words to our audience? And Selin, what would you like to say? Um, so I guess to kind of summarize. Uh, exactly. Things. So um, it's never a good time to get started. So just get started. That's one thing. And then also there will be a lot of challenges and you will feel down at times and you may feel negative, but also uh, try to be optimistic. It's very important to have that optimism and then believe that you are capable um, with any kind of entrepreneurial idea. Think about designing different experiments where you can fail quickly and learn quickly and then even if failure happens, don't think of it as failure, think about as kind of a learning experience. Um, and then finally, there are so many different, obviously, social and environmental challenges that happen in the world. Think about how your entrepreneurial idea can contribute to it uh, while also becoming financially viable for you and um, sustainable so that it also um, kind of lasts uh, in the long term. And if you want to kind of um, look at different causes and different startup ideas. You can also visit the Goodstead platform. It's free to sign up. So there are different um, things you can discover on there, people you can meet uh, who are doing inspiring innovations. Um, so we can share the link here later on uh, to the Discover page and you can have a look. Thank you. It will be wonderful. <laughs> yes, Bettina, well, what's your concluding, concluding remarks? Um, yeah, I think um, general for me, it's not an overnight success. It has to be really sustainable. So you have to work really hard for your dreams, of course, but I think it's really worth it. So I don't know what the future brings. Uh, for me, I'm only doing it for one year. So I'm really at the beginning. Um, I'm sure there are a lot more challenges, um, failures, and hopefully a lot more successes to come and to celebrate. 
But I have to say, when you are self-employed, you learn so much more than in other jobs. Um, you have to make sure you know something about marketing, finances, logistics, IT, and you will never learn that in normal uh, jobs um, when I say this. And yeah, I think uh, when you want to do something and you already have an idea, uh, grab your notebook, write down three milestones and yeah, let's uh, just do it and don't be afraid uh, to go after your dreams, I think. Thank you, Bettina, for optimism as well. And my Rose, I can um, take <laughs> It's very encouraging to see nearly 50 people at this webinar, so hopefully uh, 50 prospective entrepreneurs. Um, uh, yes, I, I can uh, agree with both Celine and Bettina that you should go. You, if you have a dream, you should go for it. Um, because as I said before, even if you fail, you say, at least I tried, you know, and not what if and what what not. So um, uh, support, get a support network, um, start on your business plan, you know, um, put your your dream, uh, your dream business on paper because it says when you see it on paper, you know, it makes it more real and start working to, towards your goal. As um, I think Bettina said, this is not the destination, it's the journey. And, you know, and you need to enjoy the journey um, along the way. Um, do not be afraid to ask for help. We are not superheroes, you know, we uh, we get tired, we get anxious, we get angry. So um, uh, ask for help because we cannot we cannot do it all all the time. We can do it all sometimes, but not all the time. So um, don't be shy or afraid to ask for help. Um, uh, both Hurir and Sabine have my contact details. So any of you out there who would like to have a chat or something, please contact me. I mean, I am very busy, but I always find the time. So I would be very happy um, to hear from you and uh, help you in any way that, that I can. Thank you, my Rose. Uh, really, we are appreciated right now. My students are there and, and many people, international uh, participants are in the, uh, 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 they, are, they are waiting and they are maybe they are already uh, thinking their entrepreneur ideas. Thank you. And dear participants and dear international audience, we are all here for the second year for our round table. We did it again um, and, and uh, and Sabine, Bet Bettina Gangleberger, and Celine Yiğitbaşı, and Marie Rosa uh, Francisa, thank you very much for participating. And, and thank you, Sabine, because she is actually holding us and brought us together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you all for this. And we put all the um, web sites into the chat. So for all the audience, you can easily access them there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If you want to get in touch and I saw that Celine was also posting an app, so maybe the others can as well if you have something, but I put the website so everyone I think can now have a look. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also some of our entrepreneurs are here. I'm very thankful for that from our Kite Center. So I'm sure they got a lot of inspiration from your speeches and your talks. Exactly. And ECREA is with us and, and they, they, with their participants, they are with us. So associations, universities, students, inter, international participants, we are get together. We talk about it and thank you, our champions, because right now you are our role models and our champions. Uh, and then we, we try to uh, get inspiration and we learn to be optimistic. It is really important. <laughs> Yeah, thanks also as well to everybody. Thank you very much. Um, we certainly want to make another round table like that, as uh, Yuri always is already said, next year on the 8th of March, of course. Again, it will be a Friday. We know already that but much. And it would be great if some people came up with maybe some ideas as well, if we should uh, transform our format anyhow or anything. Otherwise, we will make it a uh, quite a similar setting with different founders, maybe. And um, I, I found it very interesting to hear the things of, that you all said. And I took many notes because I want to write at least a blog about it and then post it and I will forward it to you and maybe you can also use it. And as I said, the, the video recording you can also use, of course, for your platforms if you want to make some, um, if you want to give it as an inspiration to other people, maybe even. Yeah. 
So hopefully we inspired some of the audience today. As I said, students were here and entrepreneurs were here, young people. Uh, and young entrepreneurs, it's not always a question of age, of course not, because even today I have somebody who retired and she said to me, now I'm going to make a business because I have lots of time. So I think it's never too late, like Mary Rose said. So it's absolutely a venture that you can do anytime. Thank you all very much for participating. Thank you very much for your time again. And have a nice day and enjoy the day, the rest of the day. Take your time, as Mary Rose said, some time for yourself on this special Women's Day. <laughs> Thanks a lot then. Thank exactly. you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. You. Bye. All the best to you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot.